Dzień dobry, I should be saying. We just took the train from Wuch, Wuch. which I still love to say Wuch, to um, Bidgoszcz. Bidgoszcz. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, eh? Yeah. Uh, it was about three and a half hours, and we've now arrived at our hotel, the Mercure Hotel, and we came straight up to the rooftop because there's a great view of the whole city from here. And we're about to go out and explore, but we wanted to first get a sense of where we're going out to. See and, what the city uh, looks like. Exactly. And we're gonna bring you guys along. crossing the bridge into the old town in Bydgoszcz and there's a really cool sculpture here of a man on like a tightrope and it's really symbolic for not only Bydgoszcz but for Poland because it symbolizes when Poland joined the European Union on May 1st 2006 so it's really neat to see that as we kind of make our way further into the old town here. And behind the man, if you look at this um, red building here, it's actually the biggest post office in Poland. It goes all the way over to the next block. All right, we're gonna go grab some lunch now at a restaurant called Kuchnia, and uh, looking forward to seeing what we find there. Here's Kuchnia in this cool covered area. with something really fabulous looking. This is chicken liver pate with black currant mousse and they've added a touch of old Polish vodka <laughs> which is never out of place in a dish in Poland and so we're going to spread it on this bread and I asked for lemonade and they made some up special and I didn't realize how popular lemonade is in Poland but a lot of restaurants will actually make it themselves so we're lucky that they do that too. Oh I have to say Nastrovia. <laughs> Nastrovia. <laughs> has arrived and I ordered the chicken breast with peas and carrots, polenta and cheese sauce. And it's like the appetizer, it's so nice looking that I kind of don't want to eat it. <laughs> but also it smells so good that I, let's be real, I do want to eat it. <laughs> so I'm going to start. I got a local fish called Xander, so I'm excited. I don't think I've ever had Xander. I don't even know what that is, where it comes from, what it tastes like, but it looks good. I like that it's a local fish. I do too. <laughs> Lunch was delicious. So <laughs> yummy. That was really good. And now we are walking through the beautiful Park. market square here. Rynek. And going to a place that sounds really interesting, but I've never heard of anything of its kind. I'm not sure it before. exists anywhere else in yeah, the world. I don't actually think that it does. So that's where we're heading next. <laughs> <laughs> so where we're going is called the Museum of Soap and the History of Dirt. Dirt. <laughs> Which is just awesome. Um, I'm just so happy knowing this type of museum exists. I know. And it does, it smells like soap as you're walking towards the museum. Yeah. And I'm sure it's just going to get even better as we go inside. <laughs> are going to start by making soap. <laughs> All right, so one teaspoon of this. And now we get to choose a scent. So there's lemongrass, orange, and lavender. Two, three. It's looking not quite like soap yet, but we're gonna get there. Which mold to choose? I'm gonna go with this one. You're going bunt? I'm going bunt. All right. Yours looks like laundry detergent. <laughs> yeah. Mine looks really pretty, actually. Congratulations, you may be on soap. Now I will just put it to the fridge. And okay. after our tour, they will be ready. Oh, perfect. We finished Got our, our soaps. <laughs> They've emerged from the fridge in solid form and wrapped it so nicely. 
and it's a nice way to end our tour here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I feel like I learned a lot about not only dirt and soap, but just hygiene in general and the history of hygiene. And now I have a little hygienic product to take with me. I definitely have a much greater appreciation for soap yeah, and cleanliness in absolutely. general. Absolutely. <laughs> can't wait to use this. Yeah. <laughs>
from the island where uh, the brewery is located. And, and uh, oh my god, <laughs> we ate so much. <laughs> we ate a lot today. It's been such a good introduction though to the gosh. And uh, we're gonna head back to our lovely hotel now and digest all of the food yes. we had today. Get some rest. And get some sleep because the adventure continues in the morning. Mm -hmm. So we will see you guys then. <laughs> good, good night. night. It was a short night last night, but, uh, and it's actually nice to be up early, I have to say, because it was so busy last night, you know, it was like it's nice to see everybody the out on the streets, and now almost nobody's out on the streets. Nope. <laughs> so we wanted to venture out again and just ease into the day with our flat whites. And uh, we're heading to back to Mill Island, where we were yesterday, to have a little picnic, mm -hmm. because what better way to start the day? <laughs> Coffee, bakery. Mill Island. <laughs> Mill Island. <laughs> Sunny day. Yeah. I'm very happy right now. <laughs> finish our picnic and it's nice to just slow down and feel the, the pace of the city going around you slowly on a Sunday morning. And we picked this picnic location because it's right by the water and there's a lot of rivers and a canal here in Bidgush and there's like 38 or 40 bridges here. So we are going to get on a boat now, uh, which is a lovely way to spend a Sunday morning and just get a different view of the city and see it from the water. So I think our ride is here. Did you bring your water wings, Mark? Oh, I should have brought Just gravel. in case. <laughs> oh, no. I never even You'll be fine. It looks pretty calm up. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. Yeah. Here we go. All aboard. All aboard. <laughs> Okay. Hello. 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 Nice to see you. <laughs> Good morning. Nice to see you. We just got on the boat and didn't know this, but the picnic is going to continue because there's a beautiful spread here of local cheeses, four different kinds, um, local wine because this is actually a wine region in Poland, and homemade marmalade. So <laughs> I'm glad that I still have some appetite left. We came outside because obviously the, the view is unbeatable outside and we just went under the bridge where we first started yesterday and we saw the man crossing the river, the statue. And it's just really cool to get a different perspective on things. And it's just, I mean, there's nothing like a boat ride. So to start Sunday morning with a, a coffee and a picnic and then a boat ride is pretty, pretty blissful, I gotta say. <laughs> got off the boat and we're going to a houseboat now. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here. From one boat to another. Yeah. <laughs> and watch your step because there's a, a drop down to the water. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> From the boat to the houseboat. <laughs> Which I think I could live in. It's really nice. It's this, so sweet in this here. This is actually someone's home. It's yeah. a private home. It was built in Bidgush. So I didn't realize that they had, you know, a big boat building um, industry here. But it's really wide, so it doesn't, it feels very spacious yeah. inside. And we're gonna continue the picnic party <laughs> on the river. Left the houseboat. <laughs> Wasn't that nice? It was so nice, honestly. Um, I could have spent all day there just yeah. sitting, looking out at the water. It is really, really calm. And uh, it's really popular and getting more popular actually to build these kinds of houseboats in all different sizes. And then they've been shipping them from here in Bidgush uh, all over Europe. And there's apparently about 130 of them now floating all over Europe. Yeah, especially in uh, France and Italy. So it's neat to get, you know, just to see how someone else lives. Spend some it's time on one. Really interesting. So anyway, now we've uh, we've left the river and we're continuing our walk around the gush. There's 
there's a lot of really beautiful tenement houses here. And this one street is just beautiful house after beautiful house after beautiful house. And now there's like shops in the bottom and apartments up top. You get to live in a gorgeous place. We're walking around the streets and discovered someone who's from Bidgosh that I had no idea, Marian Rayevsky, who was one of the breakers of the Enigma Code. And this statue is to him, a brilliant mathematician, obviously. And here he is making notes, so he worked with Turing and was responsible for breaking the Enigma Code. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We finally meet the archer lady of Fidgosht. <laughs> and if you notice, um, you know, she's got these arrows and the bow. And if you remember down by the river, we saw the other statue of the man balancing on the, the wire. And he was holding arrows, sort of collecting them. And you can't tell here, but she's actually pointing directly towards him. And there's a bit of a love story there. So she's shooting arrows in that direction. He's collecting them for her to bring them back. So they uh, have a little uh, cooperation going on here in Rigosh. <laughs> so many beautiful green spaces in this city. It's absolutely lovely. <laughs> We're in the oldest park in Vigash now and just saw a beautiful fountain by the same designer who did the Archer Lady. Oh, and uh, It's this, beautiful. This is the end of the video. Oh. <laughs> We're leaving Vigash now and we're very sad to leave. This has really been a lovely place to visit. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as much as we have. And if you liked the video, remember to give it a like. And of course, subscribe for lots more travel adventures. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.